Sometimes you just know from the description that something sounds like a bad idea, like secondhand IUD businesses or at-home circumcision kits. But then sometimes you hear an idea and you think to yourself, if that works, that thing's going to rock. That's pretty much the way I felt when I heard about Circus Electrique, which enters the discussion here as a turn-based RPG in a circus world. If you like these kind of videos, subscribe, check out the channel. Let's begin. This game is set in alternate 1800s, when a revolutionary new technology called the Spark has fundamentally altered all of human society. The game comes together and combines the elements of classic games like Darkest Dungeon and somewhat like Monster Train and mixes them with the caveats of cavorting with a, all manner of circus performers as you balance the life of a performer, the role of a protector, and wrapping it all up in every bit of atmosphere you can possibly think of. You take on the role of a young woman investigating an event in a fictional past London that's turned citygoers into maniacs and also reunited her with an old and not altogether trusted family member. You start out running the circus as well as hiring characters from the circus for exploring the world, set out into discrete maps as you and your clown posse go out and try to find out what's happened to the people in the town. Played out like a board game with some spots having battles with unique locations that impact your abilities like nighttime, rain, or otherwise, and other spots possibly having games of chance where you're consistently risking versus taking home your rewards. There's even more locations that unlock more of the story, as well as doing interviews as the new circus leader and finding out more of the story through those interactive moments. The circus life itself is much more developed than you may expect, more like the base gameplay of other titles like this, where you run the circus from the base level up. You can rush your characters to heal them, hire new circus performers that come into the circus on trains, perform shows, create different items. The main gameplay mechanism here has you unlocking more and more exciting nightly performances in the circus, each with its own requisite spots for openers, mid-show performers, and otherwise. Each character not only having their skills that they use in battle, but a lot of those skills that work for them during these nightly events, or they have classes that they don't want to work with, probably because behind the scenes, strongmen are a-holes. Now, depending on who you put into one spot, the amount of excitement goes up or down, as well as your synergy. And depending on how high it is, you can basically get stars, these stars you put into extra presentation pieces that add more glitz and glamour, and that becomes your overall event rating. Depending on how many points you put into those categories, you get resources back from the crowd. It could be money if you put a highly entertaining but not challenging show on. Or maybe it's just some experience points for everyone because you're doing something risky, but maybe the audience doesn't really see that. Or maybe gifts for the performers like roses for a singer. Those items can be used in the game's huge crafting system to make other items that you can use in the battle, which I'll talk about in a second, like fire grenades and healing items or other more useful parts for the events that happen nightly. That's half of the game. The other half is trekking through the city. You put four of your performers into your adventuring group as they go out to battle the crazy people in the city and investigate what's happened. Each battle is preceded by information on what effects may occur during it. Here's one thing I didn't expect from Circus Electric. Many times something like rain won't do just the expected change you may expect, like fire works better or worse. No, there might be three or four huge changes, like demotivating everyone in the battle because it's cold outside, or impacting everyone's ability to hit with some elements, and so on. Now, one cool thing is you don't really have to worry too much about that. The game's HUD is busy. I'll talk about that in a moment, but it is also excellent. It can appear really, really cumbersome at first, though. The up and down arrows for everyone's skill indicating instantly what's being impacted as you choose the abilities is profoundly useful when you dive into your 13th fight between your clown car full of circus freaks and the local robot cops and trying to remember who gets exactly what. In the same way the circus main has people who do or don't like to work together, those synergies are somewhat replicated in the battles in the form of positions, motivation, and the skills based on the classes. The game has 15 classes total of circus performers, from escape artists to mystical healers, cannonball artists, fire breathers, clowns, strongmen, each with their own set of skills that are taken randomly from a pool that the class all has. And each one of these characters not only likes a specific position on the field, whether that's at the front or the back or somewhere in the middle, positioning is hyper important otherwise as well. So some skills can't be used in some positions and all of them make some kind of sense why. For example, no matter how big your hammer is, you're not swinging it from the back of the group all the way to the back of the enemy's group. But maybe you have a character that uses a skill that when it's done, sends them to the back of your line and your clown would move forward, going next as well. Now, when you're in that third space, maybe you can hit somebody from there. 
There's an incredible amount of strategy in the title, especially as you continue moving forward. Strongmen, flexing biceps, bending bars, to better scare the living crap out of bobbies who've come out to stop the circus performers from exploring the game world, and then hammering them with a big old clown hammer, and then using your thrillometer special attack that you actually get to customize and level up when you're within the circus as you go higher in level as well. All of this mixes together to create a game that has you not only playing those classes in particular, but also always constantly looking for different ways where you can min them together. Each character has a variety of stats as well, like healing, damage, accuracy, dodging, criticals, defense, and protection. They also have some passive skills where maybe they can't be pushed back during a battle, which is important because Allies and enemies can be taunted, pushed, and pulled into advantageous positions. And it's important to understand that because you might find yourself launching a trap and then watching enemies slide through it and consistently be burned over and over again and find out that a skill that didn't seem incredibly useful can turn out to be a game changer. While health and keeping characters alive is important, motivation is also an equally just as useful to keep an eye on here. It's basically your second health bar, your mental health. First, it's impacted by all of your people. It's also impacted by those you perform with in the circus events. So it always makes sense to sometimes switch out people from your adventuring group into the main tent so they can do an event or two, get some of that motivation up, or at the very least during battles, make sure that you're aiming some positive motivation their way. In the battles, proper motivation can see players and enemies doing an incredible amount of damage or seeing them running from battle and escaping into the night if your motivation goes too low. They basically just retire. As a total gameplay offering, there is a ton to see in Circus Electric. It may not be for everybody. That fiction may not attract some people like it attracted me, but it was so different. And one of the major reasons why it worked so well was the way the fiction fit the form of the moves. Luckily, this plays out pretty well performance-wise too. It's exactly what you would expect. It doesn't have a ton of features or graphics options that you can adjust, but luckily it seems like a lot of them aren't needed. It's pretty well optimized across the cards and CPUs, if not maybe a step up from what you would normally get. And that makes sense for what you're seeing on the screen. The game's animation is awesome. And the way it pulls you and the characters being impacted out into this marquee spot works wonders to keep your eye sort of focused on the action and engaged at all times. This is also replicated in the sound and the music and the voice. Notice the new tent we erected? I heard noises coming from it. I assume it's some sort of practice tent? Precisely. Except, instead of practicing trapeze acts, it's a place to engage with the intricacies of mortal combat. So the sound first, it's good. It's admittedly less defined than other elements here, simply due to how the game works, the music, the animation, the more in-your-face elements that might overbear the sound work itself. And also, while you do have fire, electricity, and other effects that may play out over longer periods and many turns, it's not always easy to parse if those sounds are playing continually when rounds roll over one to the other to the other. I did have no issue with the impacts or sounds. They all played out exactly thematically like you would expect for a game sort of based in comedy like this. Musically, though, there's just something awesome about a game that somehow knows how to hammer in circus sounding music without sounding ancient, but still feeling at the same time familiar and quirky. Original circuses actually started with a fiddler or someone on the flute playing before the action. It's always a bit of that up-tempo happiness filtering out, especially in the faster music that sounds like a march high speed and always feeling like you should be seeing somebody getting a hit in the head with a balloon filled with flour like an old In Living Color skit. When it comes to the voice, though, this is the one place I can say, honestly, I never expected a game like this to excel. First, the entire game is voice acted, which may sound like a small thing, but most of these games of this kind aren't. In fact, many of them have no voices or they're sort of stinger based, reminding the player of anime where a sound or initial word or sentence is blurted. Then you're set down to read. 
Not so with this game, which start to finish is fully voiced with appropriate accents and not a small amount of emotion even for characters that are just 2D still creatures and screens. That levels up this feeling of professionalism that the game has, and I think titles like this in the future, I would love to see more and more voice for them, even though, yes, the lion does basically go rawr. Let's talk about fun factor, though, and is it fun? Being upfront, these games really have to be tight with their gameplay and really feed their atmosphere back into it to draw me in. And if they don't, that inevitable boredom creeps in for me. And at some point, I find a game size 14 clown shoes just be too big for the couple of hours I want to put into it. Circus did not do that. It's the way it consistently has you upgrading, crafting, balancing the characters in and out of the main circus proper, as well as traveling. Sometimes firing a character with a passive that's just too impactful for you to work around and then sending out a call, watching that train blast into the circus with a new group of clinically insane randomized clowns and cannoneers and then thinking to yourself, I may have to fire some of these guys, but I'm going to hire them to check them out. And then you realize they even thought that through and allow for you to test the characters in a faux battle environment to see if there's something that you actually really want to use and somebody that you really want to end up buying and hiring. And being able to do that is so important for a game like Circus. I never felt lost because things made sense in a weird way. No matter what mechanisms it went through, it fit in the fiction somewhere to the point that I was like, yeah, okay, I get it. The clown hates working with the escape artist and that's my team. However, I do think that Circus feels more like a one-time or maybe two-time thing than a lot of other games in this genre. It's kind of wrapped up in that solid RPG story playing with different groups and characters is going to pay off, but I would love to see some DLC extend some of the features here or later on. As you guys know, I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or never touch it again rating system. This game had me. It's slightly inebriated birthday clowns. Even though they never said it, that's the first thing I thought when I saw it, but it continued to reinforce itself. It's not a one-trick pony. It is a pony that's out there doing all the tricks. That's what the thing is about. Half of the circus, half of you going out and adventuring. It's something I never expected to really see a company put together. Sabre has done a fantastic job offering something different. It won't appeal to everybody, but I do think that there is an appeal there for anybody who likes this kind of format and this kind of gameplay. And that's it for me. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did or didn't, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you did or didn't. Doesn't matter. Make sure you do so no matter what. Jump into the patron if you get a chance. We have a fantastic patron. We got D&D games, video games, people hanging out, all kinds of stuff. We give credit where it's due in there. If you guys want to jump in and talk about a game in a safe place and a fun one, the Discord is the place to do it, and you can get there using the Patreon. And because most of my stuff is demonetized or adult-rated anyway, despite the cussing, though, sort of like my other video, there's a lot of cussing in this one, I would love for you guys to join. But no matter what, peace out. Enjoy the rest of your week. Have a fantastic time, whether you're getting this, whether you're checking out my Steel Rising, which is coming up as a review in a couple days. I got some previews, got some new stuff that's patron only. It's going to be a good week. Well, I hope. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your week.